Hey, Randy Hunter here from BeginningSax.com. In this quick licks and tips video, I'd like to take you through some of the basics of the blues. Now, whether you're wanting to play a rock and roll kind of blues, like maybe a, a classic jazz blues or saxophone blues like Night Train. Or more of a jazz blues like a Charlie Parker blues. Oh, there's some things that you have to know about the form of the blues because all of these blues have some uh, very basic chord changes in common, and that's that they all include the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Now, Let's take out the key of G, for instance, to work on the blues in. The one chord, since we've got, um, since we're in the key of the G, our one chord would be a G chord. Now, in most blues, we have seventh chords, dominant seventh chords. That means the chord has a flat as seven in it. There's the seven. So we're dealing with just the basic arpeggio. One, three, five. I played the six in there. Six, seven. Um, some blues don't even have the seven in them. Some, uh, some rock blues just have um, six chords in them. So, um, you know, the main thing right up front is just learn the arpeggio, the triad that goes, the, the three note arpeggio, the one, three, five, that goes with the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. So in G, our one chord is G. Our arpeggio will be G, B, D. Our four chord, if we count up the G scale to the fourth note, one, two, three, four, we find that that's C, so we'll play the C triad, that's C, E, G. And we also have the five chord, one, two, three, four, five on the G scale. Puts us on D. Now, rather than playing our five chord based on that higher D or that the second octave D, I'm going to jump down to the low D and play one three five. That's D F sharp A on um, based based on the low D. So we've got G, C, and D. Now, all of these blues have these chords at some place in the progression. One of the most common chord progressions, one of the most common forms is what we call a 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1, 5, 5, 1, 1 form. Now, you've probably heard the term 12 bar blues, um, and if you haven't, you've heard it now. So I like to take uh, when I'm working with students just learning the blues, I like to break that 12 bar format up into three four bar phrases. And, uh, and again, there are a lot of variations on the organization of these chords. There are a lot of other chords that can be incorporated in the blues, but again, we're just dealing with a very basic blues. So our first phrase, let's make it one, 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 one. So we've got G for four bars. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So there I used the G triad over those four bars. I played it four times. The final time I kind of gave an answer to the phrase by playing it down. I played it up three times. The final bar I played down. Now our second four bar phrase is the four chord for two bars. Remember that's the C chord followed by the one chord for two bars. So I'm going to play the C triad twice followed by the G triad twice, and I may answer it again like I did previously. So here's our second phrase. And our final four bar phrase, we're going to use five, five, that's D, D for two bars, and then one, and then the final measure, we're going to rest. A lot of times the blues will go back to the five chord, sometimes it will stay on the four chord, but we're just going to bring our, our phrase to conclusion by resting on the final on the final bar. So here's the five chord for two bars, and the one chord for one bar, and then four beats of silence. Two, three. <laughs> Now, let me play through the whole format uninterrupted. One, two, three. 
three. <laughs> Now, I'll just do a brief improvisation through our blues format, and you're going to hear me phrase it in four bar phrases, but you should, and I'm going to stick with just the triads like we've just played, so you should easily be able to recognize the sound of those triads and, um, and, the, and the four bar phrases as I play this. So remember, we've got the one chord for four bars, the four chord for two bars, the one chord for two bars, so our first phrase, four bars on the one chord, second phrase. Four four one one, and our final phrase will be five five one rest. And two three. <laughs> So that's an easy format for you to learn just the very basics of the blues chord progression. And you, by learning it by the number like that, remember how we related, the, how we located the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord by just playing up the major scale. By learning it by the number like that, you're set so that you can practice the blues form in any key. You know, and this is just good basic stuff for getting you started on the chord changes. Of course, it's important to learn things like the, the blues scale and all the different keys. And, you know, I've got a jazz sax quick licks and tips video on learning the blues scale. Um, it's important to learn about dominant chords and about all the different things that you can do on the blues. And it's also important to learn about all the different variations that might occur in the blues. So there's tons of variations. But by learning the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord and this basic format for the blues, then you're set to practice the blues in really any key or at least get started learning the blues in any key. Now, if you wanna learn more about the blues, be sure to check out my lesson series called Introduction to the Blues. You can either, it's a four lesson series available at beginningsax.com and it, uh, you can either purchase that series individually or you can purchase it as part of my Stage 1 Jazz Improv lesson series. And I've got other lessons too, like uh, Blues by the Fours and um, uh, Shaping the Blues Scale. So I've got tons of stuff on the blues at my website, so I hope you'll check it out. Okay? Hope you enjoy playing the blues. Thank <laughs> you. 